What is your English level? Beginner, intermediate or advanced? Let's find out! Today I'm going to test your English level. Hello guys, I'm Kate and in this lesson we are going to have an English level test to understand your level of English. I will give you questions divided in three different levels – beginner, intermediate and advanced. I will show you the question, then you will have 5 seconds to come up with the answer. If you need more time, you can pause the video, think about the answer and play it again. And please don't forget to count the number of correct answers you have. Also, I'm gonna explain the grammar and vocabulary in every question so that you know why your answer was wrong. Now let's start the test. The first five questions are for the beginner level. Question 1. Which sentence is correct? A. How many butters do I need for this recipe? B. How much butter do I need for this recipe? C. How much butters do I need for this recipe? The correct sentence is B. How much butter do I need for this recipe? Why? Butter is an uncountable noun. We cannot say butters. That's not correct. We use many with countable nouns like apples, oranges, books, tables and so on. In other words, we use many when we can count things like one apple, two apples, three apples, many apples. We use much with uncountable nouns like sugar, milk, snow, butter, water and other products. I am going to explain this rule later in this video, so please keep watching it. Question 2. Which sentence is correct? A. She enjoys spending the day in the mountains. B. She enjoys spending the day in the mountain. C. She enjoys spending the day on the mountains. The correct sentence is A. She enjoys spending the day in the mountains. In the mountains means a general area. We are not talking about one specific mountain. We are talking about the area. When we are talking about a specific mountain, we say on the mountain. For example, there is a house on the mountain. In the mountain is not correct because this means inside the mountain. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. She gave her book to him. B. Him gave her book to she. C. She gave his book to he. The correct sentence is option A. She gave her book to him. In this sentence, she is the subject pronoun, her is the possessive pronoun, and him is the object pronoun. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. There is a lot of furniture in the room. B. There are a lot of furniture in the room. C. There is a lot of furniture in the room. The correct sentence is A. There is a lot of furniture in the room. Why? The verb to be in this sentence is used in the singular form because furniture is an uncountable noun. We cannot say there are because furniture is singular and it's not used in the plural. There are some groups of uncountable nouns. Food and drinks. Bread, butter, cheese, milk, coffee, tea, salt, and so on. Materials and substances. Wood, steel, gold, silver, plastic, air, gas, oil, and so on. Concepts and ideas. Knowledge, information, wisdom, love, happiness, patience, justice. 
nature and weather rain snow sunshine thunder lightning and the wind abstract nouns space beauty peace respect health and well-being happiness health sleep stress and so on there are also uncountable nouns like money advice luggage equipment furniture and baggage let's move on to the next question which sentence is correct a they go to bed usually at 9 30. b they usually go to bed at 9 30. c they go usually at 9 30 to bed The correct sentence is option B. They usually go to bed at 9.30. In English, the standard word order for a sentence is a subject plus a verb plus an object. For example, she bought flowers. Here we have a sentence. They usually go to bed at 9.30. We know that the subject comes first, they. Then we have a verb go but the word usually is an adverb of frequency and it generally stands before the main verb in a sentence it's used to indicate a regular action so we put it between the subject and the verb then we have a place to bed and finally we have time 9 30. in english time expressions are generally placed at the end of the sentence so at 9 30 is correctly placed at the end of the sentence let's move on to the next question which sentence is correct a yesterday i walked to the park b yesterday i walked to the park C. Yesterday I had been walk to the park. The correct sentence is A. Yesterday I walked to the park. In this sentence, walked is the past simple form of the verb to walk. For regular verbs, the past simple is formed by adding ed to the verb infinitive. Here we have a marker, the word yesterday. When we have such markers as yesterday, a week, or a month, or a year ago, last month, last year, last weekend, last night, the day before yesterday, two years ago, then we used past simple. Let's move on to the next question. Find the correct answer. Have you decided what you want to order? Yeah. A. I'm going to have a salad. B. I'm having a salad. C. I'll have a salad. The correct option is C. I'll have a salad. I'll is a contracted form of I will. But when do we use will and when do we use going to? When we talk about the future plans, we use present continuous or going to. When we're talking about today, tomorrow, this week or next week, we use present continuous. I'm working today. I'm working tomorrow, I'm working this week, or I'm going to work tomorrow, I'm going to work next week. We use will when we make a fast decision, when we decide in the moment, we use will. I decided right in the moment what I want to eat, so I'll have a salad is the correct option here. Let's move on to the next question, which sentence is correct? A. She started her job last year in April. B. She started her job last year at April. C. She started her job last year by April. The correct option is A. We use the preposition in with months. In April, in May, in June. Which sentence is correct? A. He is the tallest man I've ever seen. B. He is taller man than I've ever seen. C. He is the most taller man I've ever seen.
The correct sentence is A. He's the tallest man I've ever seen. We have an adjective tall. There is a comparative form taller and the superlative form the tallest. We use then when we want to compare one thing with another. For example, she is two years older than me. Superlative adjectives are used to describe an object which is at the upper or lower limit of a quality. The tallest, the smallest, the fastest, the highest. In this sentence, the tallest is the correct option. We cannot say most taller man. That's not grammatically correct. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. Can you explain me this rule? B. Can you explain to me this rule? C. Can you explain this rule to me? The correct option is C. Can you explain this rule to me? We use the verb explain to mean make something clear or easy to understand, given information about it. We cannot say explain me. We have to say explain to me. We can use explain with a direct object or with a direct object and a prepositional phrase with to. For example, could you explain these numbers please? Or could you explain these numbers to me please? Great job guys! Now we have finished all the questions of the beginner level. How many correct answers do you have? If you have 8 or more correct answers, your level is not beginner. You should go on answering the questions of the test to see what your level is. But if you have less than 8 correct answers, your level is beginner. And that's not bad. You can practice more and more and improve your English level. Now we're going to get the intermediate level B. Let's start. Question 1. Which sentence is correct? A. I have read that book three times. B. I read that book three times. C. I have read it that book three times. The correct sentence is A. I have read that book three times. In this sentence, have read is the present perfect form of the verb to read, indicating an action completed in the past with a connection to the present. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. Watching movies is one of her favorite activities. B. Watch movies is one of her favorite activities. C. She likes watch movies. The correct sentence is A. Watching movies is one of her favorite activities. Option A uses the gerund, watching. A gerund is a verb in its present participle form that acts as a noun in a sentence. Gerunds are formed from verbs by adding ing. Be, being, go, going, play, playing, talk, talking, and so on. For example, her hobby is writing short stories. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. The teacher encouraged the students to continue practicing their writing skills by writing essays every week. B. The teacher encouraged the students to continue practice their writing skills by writing essays every week. C. The teacher encouraged the students continue practicing their writing skills by writing essays every week. The correct sentence is A. The teacher encouraged the students to continue practicing their writing skills by writing essays every week. 
To encourage means to help someone feel confident and able to do something or to give advice to someone to do something. For example, our parents always encouraged us to ask questions. We need to put infinitive after the verb encourage. But why do we use the word practicing instead of practice? We cannot say continue practice, that's incorrect. Here we have the verb to continue. We can say continue to practice or continue practicing. Continue to do means start doing something again that was previously interrupted. Whereas continue doing means to carry on the same thing you have already been doing. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. Whose bag is this? It is Anna's bag. B. Whose bag is this? It is Anna's bag. C. Which bag is this? The correct answer is B. Whose bag is this? So, what's the difference between whose and whose? They sound the same, but they have a different meaning. The word whose is a contraction, who is or who has. For example, who's coming to the party? In this case, the apostrophe doesn't show possession. It's a contraction. Whose is a pronoun and it shows possession. Whose bag is this? It's mine or it's hers. The question which bag is this is grammatically correct, but it doesn't show possession, so in this context it's not correct. Imagine you are in a room with three bags and someone is holding one of them. You are curious to know which bag they have, so you ask, which bag is this? The person holding the bag can respond, this is the red bag or this is the one with the zipper. Let's move on to the next question. 5. Which sentence is correct? A. If I wouldn't have missed my flight, I would be on vacation now. B. If I didn't miss my flight, I would be on vacation now. C. If I don't miss my flight, I will be on vacation now. The correct sentence is B. If I didn't miss my flight, I would be on vacation now. Option B uses the correct past tense in the conditional clause and matches the unreal past situation in the main clause. The second conditional uses the past simple after if, then would, and the infinitive. If plus past simple, would plus infinitive. By the way, I have a full video on conditional sentences. Here's the link so you can watch it after this lesson. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. The employees should have finished the report by tomorrow. B. The employees must be finished the report by tomorrow. C. The employees have to be finished the report by tomorrow. The correct sentence is A. The employees should have finished the report by tomorrow. This means that it's recommended or expected that the employees have already completed the report. We use the construction should have done to say that something is expected to be done. Which sentence is correct? A. We have a 30 minutes meeting scheduled for tomorrow. B. We have a 30-minute meeting scheduled for tomorrow. C. We have a 30-minute meeting scheduled for tomorrow. The correct sentence is B. We have a 30-minute meeting scheduled for tomorrow. Instead of saying 30 minutes meeting, we say a 30 minute 
meeting. This is because we use a form that combines the number and the unit of time. Compound adjectives are two or more words used together to form a single adjective before a noun. The combined form is called a compound noun and it always takes the singular form. For example, a two-door car, not a two-doors car. A two-hour class, not a two-hours class. A seven-day trip, a 26-mile run, a 10-page report, a three-week journey. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. Learning a foreign language takes a long time. B. Learning a foreign language takes long time. C. Learning a foreign language takes a lot of time. The correct sentence is A. Learning a foreign language takes a long time. The word time has both countable and uncountable uses. In expressions like a long time or a short time, the word time is used as a countable noun. It took a long time to proofread the work. Or learning a foreign language takes a long time. When we talk about the amount of time required to complete something, for example, number of hours, days, etc. Time is usually uncountable. For example, how much time do we need to paint the walls? Another example, hurry up, we haven't got enough time. Or the project was a complete waste of time. We don't need an article here. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. I don't like milk, cheese and butter. B. I don't like milk, cheese, including butter. C. I don't like milk, cheese or butter. The correct sentence is C. I don't like milk, cheese or butter. Conjunctions like OR are used to connect words, phrases or clauses with similar grammatical functions to express alternatives or choices. Let's have a look at this sentence. I like milk, cheese and butter. Here we use and. This sentence is positive. When we say I don't like milk, cheese or butter, it's a negative sentence. We have to use or in this context. Or is a negative and. For example, I don't speak Korean or Chinese. I never drink beer or wine. I no longer drink tea or coffee. We use OR instead of AND because the sentence is negative. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. Where is the man left his smartphone? B. Where does the man left his smartphone? C. Where has the man left his smartphone? The correct option is C. Here we have the present perfect tense. We know that present perfect is formed with have or has plus past participle. The verb has left is in the present perfect tense. Is left or does left are not correct. This is the end of the intermediate section. Now let me know how many correct answers do you have. If you have 8 or more correct answers, then your level is more than intermediate and that's amazing. Keep going with the rest of the video and find out your level of English. Now it's time to move on to the advanced section. This part is gonna be tricky, so get ready. Which sentence is correct? A. Despite having a busy schedule, I always make sure to exercise regularly and eat healthy food. B. Despite to have a busy schedule, I always make sure to exercise regularly and eating healthy food. C. Despite I'm having a busy schedule, I always make sure to exercise regularly and eat healthy food. The correct
correct sentence is A. Despite having a busy schedule, we use despite or in spite of plus a noun or plus a verb plus ing or plus the fact that. For example, despite the rain, we enjoyed our camping holiday. Despite breaking his leg, he has to go to work. Despite the fact that he had no money, he bought an expensive present for his girlfriend. Question 2. Which sentence is correct? The team of athletes are excited to compete. B. The team of athletes is excited to compete. C. The athletes team are excited to compete. The correct answer is B. The team of athletes is excited to compete. The correct option is B because team is a collective noun. Collective nouns are words that refer to a group of things or people such as a team of players, class, family, group, staff, army, council, audience are also collective nouns. So, the team should be treated as a single entity. This means that it's always referred to with a singular verb, even though it may refer to multiple individuals. In this case, the verb is is used correctly to describe the excitement of the entire team. Which sentence is correct? A. The children had been playing outside for hours by the time their parents arrived home. B. The children was playing outside for hours by the time their parents arrived home. C. The children had played outside for hours by the time their parents arrived home. The correct answer is A. The children had been playing outside for hours by the time their parents arrived home. Had been playing is the past perfect continuous form, which is formed with had been plus present participle. This tense is used to describe an action that started before a certain point in the past and was still in process at the time. In this sentence, the action of playing outside started before the arrival of the parents and was still ongoing. So, the past perfect continuous form is appropriate. 4. Make a sentence using inversion. Not only she to speak English, but also she to speak Italian. The correct answer is, not only does she speak English, but she also speaks Italian. Here we have the advanced grammar complex structure. Inversion means that we have to switch the order of the subject and the verb. Not only plus verb plus subject plus verb, but subject plus a verb. For example, not only am I a teacher, but I'm also a performer. Not only did she forget my birthday, but she also didn't even apologize for forgetting it. Let's move on to the next question. A. By next year, she will have been studying for 10 years. B. By next year, she will have studied for 10 years. C. By next year, she will study for 10 years. The correct option is B. In option B, the verb have studied is in the future perfect tense and is used to describe an action that will be completed in the future. We use the future perfect simple will or won't have plus past participle to talk about something that will be completed before a specific time in the future. The phrase by next year specifies the time when the action will be completed. Let's move on to the next question. Complete the sentences with the correct forms of the words in brackets. She met all the demanded, so she got the job. We have the word require.
The correct answer is requirements. Let's move on to the next question. Which sentence is correct? A. If only I had known about the concert, I would have gone. B. If only I know about the concert, I would go. C. If only I knew about the concert, I would have gone. The correct sentence is A. If only I had known about the concert, I would have gone. If only is used to express regret or sadness about a past situation that cannot be changed. In this sentence, the speaker regrets not knowing about the concert and expresses their desire to have gone. Let's move on to the next question. A. I wish I had remembered to bring my umbrella. Now I'm getting soaked in the rain. B. I wish I would have remembered to bring my umbrella. Now I'm getting soaked in the rain. C. I wish I remembered to bring my umbrella. So I'm getting soaked in the rain. The correct sentence is A. I wish I had remembered to bring my umbrella. Now I'm getting soaked in the rain. In English, the past perfect tense had plus past participle is used to talk about regrets or wishes about something that has already happened in the past. The phrase I wish I had remembered is an example of the past perfect tense and is used to express regret about not remembering to bring an umbrella. And we cannot say I wish I remember. That's incorrect. Complete the sentences with the correct forms of the words in brackets. We try to be to the needs of the customer. Here we have the word respond. The correct answer is, we try to be responsive to the needs of the customer. Responsive is an adjective that means reacting or replying quickly to a suggestion. Which sentence is correct? A. I'm going to work on the project as soon as I will have finished my lunch. B. As soon as I will finish my lunch, I'm going to work on the project. C. I'm going to work on the project as soon as I finish my lunch. The correct sentence is C. I'm going to work on the project as soon as I finish my lunch. Here we have a time clause. In the main part, we use the future tense. In the subordinate clause, we use the tenses of the present group. Present simple, present continuous, or present perfect. But not the future tense. For example, I'll text you as soon as they inform me. I'll answer you as soon as I've finished working. I'll call you as soon as I'm leaving work. So the option C is correct. Well done! Now you answered all the questions of the test. If you have all the answers correct in the advanced section, then you have an advanced level. Congratulations! I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to let me know your level and how many correct answers you've had in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye!